tonight. Everyone who felt pain at the hands of Stephen Paddock the night of 1 October will have to be okay without one final answer. They want answers. They want to know the why. They want closure, which I'm not entirely sure that's even possible with an event like this because it'll never go away. And although we will likely never have all of the answers, we will never forget all of what was lost that night. Those 58 angels are always in my heart, always on my mind. It never goes away. And thank you for joining us tonight at 11. I'm Brian Loftus. I'm Denise Valdez. The Metropolitan Police Department released its final report relating to 1 October. And the almost 200 page report details Paddock's history of possible mental health issues and financial losses. It also details how Paddock's brother says he may have planned the attack because he was bored and how his doctor believed he was bipolar. And it describes how he purchased dozens of guns in the year leading up to the shooting. But it does not explain why he opened fire that night, killing 58 people. Joining us now live in studio on this story is Shakela Alvarenga. Yeah, that's right, Denise and Brian. This is it, a months-long investigation, and we still don't have a motive. Police say Paddock did not leave a suicide note or manifesto. I'm getting emotional as we speak about it, and, and maybe because for the first time since October 1st, you know, we're able to take a step back now and think about actually what happened, and you know, but uh, yeah, it's it's an emotional thing. It is. Sergeant Jerry McDonald has been involved with the one October case since the beginning. For the past 10 months, he and his team have scoured through evidence, a search for clues and answers. What happened on the night of October 1st? I don't think I, my detectives had a day off for at least the first month after. We worked a lot. Metro's final report on the criminal investigation revealed that in the years leading up to the shooting, Stephen Paddock purchased dozens of guns. His girlfriend told detectives she thought it was a hobby. Paddock's primary care doctor believed he was bipolar. The biggest question, though, is unanswered. Today is still incredibly difficult to try to comprehend this senseless act of violence. To some, there will simply never be closure. Debbie Hall and her husband, Steve, came to the healing garden for the first time today since the shooting. Those 58 angels are always in my heart, always on my mind, and never goes away. The, the anxiety is always with me, um, but they're in a better place. And for my 58 strong, God bless you. It was a tragedy that affected the entire community. Now McDonald says he and others can start to heal. And I'm a native Las Vegan, right? So I drive by this, drive on the strip all the time, and, and you see things, and uh, the memories come flooding back. Uh, but uh, you know, I just hope you know that uh, the families of the 58 can somehow find a way to put this behind them. And Sheriff Lombardo also squashed all rumors of conspiracies. He said no other gunman had been identified, and police do not anticipate charging any other individuals. Brian. Thanks, Shakela.